burning? Mm, not really. Not really? It's being fumed. Dad's got all his PPE on and we're all standing here without anything. We're all just hanging around. TK Ron! Looks pretty good, Harry! Okay, so these little back bits are the ones that Aiden cut out the other day. Shane spent the last couple of days gluing and putting flanges in and the wet box. I've just used a bit of the cutout from um, the floor here with the flanges. This is the flange that's been built into the floor. And then the piece that in here, the extra bits of um, fiberglass, we're just using as lips on which to put other bits of floor. So here, and I think there's another bit around behind there. Yeah. And so now we're going to put see if the right way. Nope. Let's be going that way. Now I think it's time, you painted the bilge yesterday, now it's time to put the last piece of floor in. about would I change the laminate or the structural component of a composite part if I was just hand laminating it versus if I was vacuum bagging it or infusing it. So the difference between infusing it, vacuum bagging it or hand laminating it is the resin content and the thickness of the glass skin. Okay. When I'm using a cord structure, the thickness of the glass skin is insignificant as far as stiffness is concerned. So proportionally, your skin is very, very thin compared to the core, whether it's foam or wood or Nomex or whatever it is. So the core in the middle gives us our thickness to um, increase our stiffness. Okay. And the glass or carbon skin on the outside is a very small component. So whether I vacuum bag it or I um, hand laminate it, the thickness of that um, reinforced skin, carbon or glass, doesn't really matter much. So this is why we tend to focus on vacuum bagging these parts because we can reduce the resin content and make the overall panel lighter. If it's a monolithic or a single skin part, this is this is where it does change. Okay. With a single skin part, the thickness of the skin matters 
relative to stiffness. Now bear with me, this is just probably going to bake a few noodles. If I have 1000 grams of fiber in my single skin part, okay? That means there's no foam core, no wood, no nothing. It's just car solid carbon fiber or solid e-glass or solid Kevlar or whatever it is. Solid fiber and resin. Now if I've got a thousand grams in there and I vacuum bag it, on average it will come out to approximately one millimeter depending on the material you're using. But in rough calculations when you vacuum bag a component that's monolithic it will come out approximately one millimeter per thousand grams. There's, there's a lot of caveats there, depending on the, the weave, the texture, or all the rest of it, okay? Now, if I vacuum bag it, it's one millimeter thick, okay? I've got a thousand grams jammed into that one millimeter and some resin in there holding it together. So I end up with what we call a relatively fiber dense monolithic part. If I am just hand laminating that, depending again on the stitch in the fabric that you're using it will usually end up about 25 percent thicker if you're using something like a chop strand it'll end up nearly or more than 50 percent thicker okay so if you're using a thousand grams of fiber again you can end up being one and a half millimeters thick as opposed to one millimeter thick and if you're using chop strands, like I said, you could be 50% to 100% thicker. So you'll end up with a two milli up to up to two millimeter thick monolithic part with only a thousand grams of fiber in there. Okay. So as far as stiffness is concerned, the hand laminated version is actually stiffer. But a big but, it is not as strong because it has not got as much fiber in there so to answer the people why am i infusing the parts and bagging them well it's 100 percent weight related and yes it is a big weight gain for us okay to reduce our part weights and use 50 up to 50 percent less resin for us that's a big big thing overall that's going to be up to about 100 kilos uh, of dead resin that we won't carry around on the boat. The other reason that I like to use the technique of infusion is when it's done right, and I've been struggling to get the infusion right because my original plywood table was not good enough. <laughs> I had a sneaking suspicion it wasn't going to be good enough, but I thought I'd try it and no, it wasn't good enough. But now that I've sorted my uh, table out, I'm producing parts like this. Okay, this this is the table side, and you can't hand laminate parts that look like this. When you when you've got an e glass part that's completely transparent, you can see the pencil writing on the foam here um, through. That is uh, 1,200 grams, 1,200 grams of e-glass, and you can see straight through it. You know that that's a good laminate. So I can't achieve that sort of thing, hand laminating. Can't achieve that sort of thing, uh, vac bag. But I can inf uh, achieve that infused. And the weight difference with this part versus um, I did I did one of these hand laminated and it's and it's just fractionally better um, I think it was like 25 grams lighter you probably go eh, it's only 25 grams but when the thing only weighs 800 grams 25 grams is a pretty big proportion and and the amount of resin wastage in this now is about the same as the hand laminated one 50% of the glass weight is what you mix up in resin and that allows for the resin in the tube the transfer medium and your peel ply 
So it ends up, basically, I wasted, I'll see if I can find the bucket. There you go. There's the bucket. And that actually has some resin in it from the infusion before as well. So my wastage is getting very, very low. I was talking about the table. Here's the new table, bloody awesome. Uh, having a non-porous table has made a huge mungus difference. I can get full vacuum with zero leaks. Couple of the other big steps forwards. Um, there you go. We've been struggling a bit with local resin suppliers here in in Spain. Um, a little bit challenging to work with at times. So I ended up going to Easy Composites. I thought they were just purely a UK based company, but they actually have an outfit or an outpost here in Europe as well. So you can get stuff in Europe, which is awesome. Means that the whole Brexit thing is not such an issue, whether you're in the UK or in Europe. So that's that was cool. So that was a big plus for me that I could get stuff uh, European based. The Fusion FX um, spray adhesive glue. This is the one that um, melts in the resin. Um, and it's also really, really sticky. So you use way, way, way less than the, um, the 3M spray glue. Spray uh, mold release wax. Um, that's for another slightly different project down the thing. Super cool shit. Um, Vinyl ester, polyester, infusion polyester. That's what you saw that hatch made from. It's glass bubbles and fume silica. You can get that from anyone or anywhere, but I can just get it through them with a lot less hassle. And price wise, especially with their fabrics, so me, I got a bunch of e-glass and the transfer medium. So this transfer medium I got through them as well. Um, much better priced than all the others that I've been getting stuff from. I thought it was worth mentioning because it's just made my life so much easier. <laughs> What's this, Dad? A uh, new fuel tank shelf. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be an easy one, but turned into a pretty challenging one. Yeah. Oh, is that? dent in there is that going to be where your strap goes over the fuel tank yep yeah. cool so this part is going to go in the front star side here for this uh plastic fuel tank so that's going to go into this locker up here so let's open it up. <sighs> Been chipping out all the old paint that's in here. Fuel tank used to go along here, there, and then went up to that bolt there, and you can see the outline of it actually. So it was that steel tank over there, sat up against the back there, but this new one we're gonna have run along the side here so that we have more space in the actual locker here and dad's currently making the table for it to sit on so it sits level and we're going to make it so that there's no holes through any bulkheads anymore so we'll be able to get rid of that bolt down hole that hole that hole that hole and then once we do the new water tanks we'll be able to get rid of that hole that hole might be able to get rid of that hole and that hole as well Uh, Oliver uh, shaped these foam edges for our fuel fuel tank shelf. So we got some new plastic fuel tanks instead of the stainless steel ones. Ooh, that's a bit of a sharp edge, Oliver. I might need to round that up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so uh, new plastic tanks instead of the stainless steel ones. Why did we do stainless steel tank? 30 years old now. We have lots and lots of 
35 years old. Right, you can see all the pitting here in the stainless steel. Right, uh, this pitting has happened somewhere on the back, down the bottom here. Let's see if we can find it. There's a bit down here, bit here, I'm not sure which one it is, but it is equal to diesel um, being on the outside. So no longer holds diesel like it used to, which is a bit of a pain. Um, and of course, everything is weighed and compared, and we made quite a nice weight gain going from the stainless steel to the plastic. Um, so yeah, that's a, uh, and it also, things like our old diesel tanks had these sight glasses in them, which is fantastic. And for me, I love visual, super, super simple um, mechanisms. Instead of the electronic um, sensor duva thingies, words um, that usually fail. Really nice to have, to have inside, but you can't really go too wrong with this. But this is no longer considered a safe method of building a diesel tank because we have a uh, clamp arrangement essentially below the level of the diesel and this could fail and diesel spill out everywhere. So this is no longer actually a legal tank under ISO and a lot of other regulations. So the pla this drove the plastic a bit because in essence our um, plastic tank the whole thing is a sight glass when this is full of diesel you can actually see the level of the diesel in here so super cool it will get a sensor in it as well so that lazy ass can just have a look at the diesel level inside what's the long skinny bag for shane edge of that one Oh, this is what you've been helping with, Ollie? And why the extra glass on, on the... Because um... these don't actually have glass on them. Oh, okay. Did you these make up just... those little bits, yeah. did you? Just to stop it sliding around. Mm -hmm. 